Have you ever used an AI web design tool and thought, wow, this just built a whole website for me in seconds. It's crazy how far these tools have come. AI web generators are getting better every single day. But here's the thing. Even the best AI-made apps can still be buggy or unstable. And that's exactly where Test Sprite comes in. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to test, debug, and improve any AI-generated website or even your own custom-built projects using Test Sprite, an intelligent testing tool that automatically scans your app, detects bugs, and even helps your AI agent fix them all inside your workspace. By the end of this video, you'll see how easy it is to transform a rough, unstable app into a smooth, production-ready website, all powered by smart automation. So grab your coffee, sit back, because today we're letting AI test AI and you're gonna see just how powerful that can be. So guys, here I am on V0's official website. I've used this tool before to create websites, and I actually have tutorials around this too. If you already have an existing project that you want to test with Test Sprite, you can definitely do that. But if you want to create one quickly, you can use AI tools to generate a new project. For example, here I go ahead and enter a prompt that I've prepared to create a simple AI name generator landing page. I'll put the link to this prompt down below in the description box of this video so you can use it too. After entering the text prompt, I go ahead and select this send button. It quickly gets to work and the generating process usually takes about a minute and it's done generating. Let's take a look at it. Yes, looking great as our starting point. Now, to test and fix bugs in our V0 coded app, we're going to use Test Sprite. It's an AI agent for software testing, and it has an MCP option, which means you can use Test Sprite directly inside your IDE, something like Cursor, Windsurf, etc. So, if you're using AI to write code, which most of us are doing these days, there's a very high chance that the code written by AI will include some bugs. So, let's test it out and find what bugs this app includes. For the AI agent, I'm going to use Cursor. To bring this app from V0 to my cursor, I first need to take it as a new GitHub repository. To do that, simply select this GitHub icon. Here, you first need to connect your GitHub account if you're not already connected. After connecting, you should see it appear right here. Below that, you can choose the repo name, I'll leave it as it is, and then select the Create Repository button. After it creates our new repository, it will provide a link for us. Now let's go ahead and open that link it will redirect me to the GitHub repository. From here, select this green code button and copy the HTTPS link that it provides. Next, let's open our cursor and start a new project by cloning this repo. Click on clone repo, paste the link that we just copied right here and hit enter. Then we need to create a new folder for this project on our computer and select it as the repository destination. And that's it. Our project is now set up and ready to go. So the first thing that we need to do is ask the AI to install all required dependencies for this project so it can run correctly. And you can use any model that has reasoning, but if you use the free version of Cursor, just leave it on auto since the other options are for pro accounts. Auto can handle this process too, so no worries. But I'm going to choose GPT-5 because it's pretty much the most advanced model out there, so why not use it? Now I go ahead and say, Please run the necessary setup commands to install all dependencies listed in package JSON and make the project ready to run locally. And select the send button. Our agent immediately gets to work and says, I will inspect package JSON to confirm the package manager and scripts, then install dependencies accordingly. I will proceed to run the install right after. What this means is that the agent first checks which package manager to use, PNPM, NPM, or YARN by looking at lock files and fields in package.json. It then reads the scripts section to know which commands are available for starting or building the project, checks for any environment requirements, validates dependencies, and plans the correct install command. Once everything is set, it runs the install, watches for errors, handles post-install scripts if needed, and then runs a build to make sure the project compiles correctly. When it finally says dependencies installed and production build completed successfully, it means everything is ready to start locally. Now we run the app by opening the terminal, typing pmpm dev and hitting enter. Our app is now running on localhost 5173. One simple note for beginners is that to run the test with test sprite, we need to remember the local host port 
It could be 5173, like mine, or 3000. To make sure the app is running properly, hold control and click the link in the terminal. And there we have it. The last thing we need for Test Sprite is a document that explains the product's features, purpose, and how it should work. If you already have a project specification document in PDF, Markdown, or another format, you can use that. If not, you can create one with the help of Cursor by sending, I'm about to run a front-end test for our landing page, and I need you to create a detailed product specification document for it. Please generate the document in an MD file format and hit send. The agent will then create a file like docs landing page product specification.md with a detailed spend goals, KPIs, UX, functional requirements, APIs, accessibility, performance budgets, analytics, QA criteria, and rollout. It also shows the file path so you know where it is. Now everything is ready and the app and product specification are set up so we can run test sprite tests smoothly. Now, the first thing that you need to do is go ahead and open the first link down below in the description box of this video. It will bring you right here to the test sprite website. Once you're there, go through the sign-up process to create an account. It's super easy and doesn't even ask for a credit card. After you sign in, you'll be brought to the dashboard. Thanks to the TestSprite team, even with the free plan, you can still explore this tool and see its capabilities in action. But if you want to upgrade and try at least one month for free, you can simply go down here on the left side and click on Manage Plan. From there, choose the Starter Edition to upgrade your account. This plan gives you access to a lot more testing credits, so you can run more detailed and frequent tests. You'll also unlock advanced AI models, get optimized execution speed, and enjoy priority support for faster assistance whenever you need it. Now the first step you want to take is to get the MCP installed into whatever IDE you're using to write code, whether that's Codex, Cursor, or any other editor. So let's go ahead and click on the Test Locally for MCP button. Once you're on that page, select the Quick Install button. Right here, you'll see options for Cursor, Claude Code, and other IDEs. I'll go ahead and select the Add to Cursor option. You'll get a pop-up asking to open Cursor. Click Open Cursor. Inside Cursor, it automatically takes you to the Tools and MCP section of the settings. Here, under MCP Tools, you'll see that the input boxes are already filled in. The name is Test Sprite, the type is Audio, and the command is npx at test sprite slash test sprite dash mcp at latest. The only thing we need to add manually is the API key. To get that, head back to the Test Sprite website. On the same page where we added the MCP to Cursor, you'll see an option to create a key. Click that, then press the green button to generate a new API key. Once it's created, Copy that key and go back to cursor. Now just paste it into the API key field and click the install button. Now you might wonder what exactly is an MCP. MCP stands for Model Context Protocol. In simple terms, it lets the AI understand your local project so it can perform tasks like installing dependencies, creating files, or running tests directly inside your IDE. Instead of switching between tools or writing long commands, the MCP allows the AI to work seamlessly within your project. I've already installed the Test Sprite MCP before, so let me just close this. If we expand this, we can see all of the tools that Test Sprite offers, which the agent can use, like generating code summaries, creating backend test plans, generating test code, and executing it. The agents are smart enough to know when and where to use these tools effectively. One thing to note is that to use the full potential of Test Sprite, it's best to provide it with a product specification document. Remember, earlier we asked the AI to create a product specification for our app. That's exactly what we need to give Test Sprite to get the best results. Now it's the moment of truth. I'm going to ask the AI to run a comprehensive Test Sprite scan to identify potential bugs, performance bottlenecks, or security vulnerabilities in the application. That's it. Hit the send button and let's see the results. If it's the first time you run and enable the Test Sprite MCP on a project, the AI agent will open a web page on your local host for you to fill in your testing information. Here we determine whether we want to test the front end or back end. I'll set it as front end. Next, we choose whether to test the whole code base or just a code diff. If your project has authentication, you can paste your test account, username, and password. You'll also need to have the application running and make sure to copy the port number and paste it right here. In this case, my app is running on localhost 5173.
Finally, upload the project specification document that we generated earlier by opening the project folder, navigating to the docs folder, and dragging the file here. Once that's done, click continue and a pop-up will confirm that the upload was successful. Selecting OK will close the page automatically. Back in the agent, it will continue running, analyzing what kind of tests to create and which tools from the Test Sprite MCP toolbox to use. Now we just give it time, complete the process, and generate the results. And it's finally done, saying kicked off and completed a comprehensive Test Sprite run, compiled results into a final report. So as you can see, the first key output is the path to the report file. Let's take a look at it. In the executive summary, we can see the overall pass rate is 4 out of 15, which means that out of 15 different tests that Test Sprite has run, only 4 of them passed. In simple terms, our application currently has 11 issues. These could be design problems, functionality errors, or even security-related bugs. Now, to see more details about what parts failed and which parts passed, let's move over to the Test Sprite dashboard. From the MCP test panel, we can see some recently created tests. And here is the one we ran for our product namer app, the one that passed four out of 15 tests on the front end. It looks like I ran another test afterward that passed three out of 15, may have disconnected during the process, which caused it to rerun, but that's totally fine. We'll just explore one of them to see the results. Okay, here we can see the exact sections of our app that passed or failed. Our landing page load and layout stability passed, which means the visual structure and responsiveness are working fine. But name generation, standard input results count failed, domain availability, badges, rendering, and timeliness failed, email input validation and subscription flow failed, and CTA navigation and modal trigger verification failed as well. So just like that, we can clearly see which parts of our app are working correctly and which parts need fixing. Now let's click on one of these tests to get more insight. I'll open the one that says API backend endpoint, domain check response accuracy and timing. When we open it, we can actually see a short video preview of the test being run, showing exactly which part of the app caused the issue. Below the video, it provides a detailed explanation. It says, the domain availability check feature on the UI does not provide any response or results after submitting multiple domain names and clicking the check button. Therefore, it is not possible to validate the check domain API endpoints, response content, and performance through the UI. So basically, the test is saying that when the AI tried to check for domain availability, the feature didn't respond at all, meaning our domain check function is broken. Let's take a quick look at the preview. You can see it tries to test the domain checker feature, but nothing happens. That's definitely an issue we need to fix. You can even review the test code here. This is the code that Test Sprite used to perform that test. Let's confirm what it found. Let's navigate back to our live website, scroll down to the domain checker section, and try it ourselves. Let's enter a few domain names and hit the check button. And yep, as you can see, there's no response at all. So TestSprite was absolutely right. This is a real issue in our app that we now need to debug and fix. Now navigating back to cursor, one thing to note is that these test codes are also located inside our test sprite test folder, so you can easily access all of them right here. At the end of the output from the prompt that ran test sprites test, it says, if you want, I can implement a Vite dev proxy for slash API slash star and add a local next server startup to resolve these failures before rerunning the tests. So I go ahead and say, okay, please do it and hit the send button. And just like that, you can start fixing the errors that TestSprite has detected in your app. You can ask your AI agent to fix them one by one, or simply tell it to review the entire TestSprite report and fix everything in one go. That's exactly what I'm about to do. So I say, analyze the TestSprite report and fix all bugs, warnings, and security issues mentioned. Make the necessary code updates to ensure the app passes all tests successfully. Then hit the send button and wait for the agent to finish its job. Once that's done, we can finally go ahead and rerun the test. So I say, rerun the complete test sprite analysis and generate a fresh report. That's it. Hit send and it will start running all the tests again to see whether the issues have been fixed or not. Each time you fix or update your app, you can rerun the analysis to see your progress and get closer to a fully working bug-free product. As you can see in my test sprite dashboard, after rerunning the command, the results now show that our app has passed 8 out of 15 tests, a big improvement from before. 
And just like that, you can continue reviewing any remaining errors and fix them, either manually or with the help of your AI agent. After a few more rounds of testing and debugging, your app will be fully stable, polished, and ready for the real world. And that's a wrap, guys. As we've seen, AI web generators are getting better every day, but even the best AI-made apps can still be buggy or unstable, and that's exactly where Test Sprite comes in. With Test Sprite, you can analyze your app, detect bugs, and let your AI assistant fix them automatically, getting you closer to a clean, production-ready project. So go ahead and open the first link down below in the description and try Test Sprite for yourself. If you enjoyed this tutorial, Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell for more AI-powered web dev content. See you in the next one.